Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna walk you through how to go from this to this in Planet Zoo. Today's video is essentially a part two of last week's video where we went through the basics of how to make realistic mountains and lakes. So if you haven't watched that one and want to see how I made the mountain and lake here, then make sure to check that out as well. For this tutorial, however, we're gonna focus on foliage and rock works. So let's just get started. So now it's time to add some rocks and foliage to just kind of blend it all together. And we're gonna see how we're gonna do that as naturally as possible. So we're gonna remove the water again gonna go to nature and I think we're gonna start with decorating the water area. I like to use the aquatic faux rocks so I'm gonna lay down two of these and then I'm also gonna lay down two of the smaller ones. I'm gonna recolor one of the larger ones. It's always nice to blend some rocks with different colors together so I think those two work nicely together and then we're gonna do the same thing with the smaller ones here and then here we're gonna put these two together in a group so I've selected these two then we're gonna merge scenery into group up here and then gonna do the same for these two like that double click this we're entering the group here so then I'm gonna duplicate a bunch of these all over the place here I'm gonna make sure the position snap is turned on and I'm gonna make sure the random rotation is turned on we're gonna place a bunch of these just all over the place like that and then we're gonna choose the one with a different color and we're gonna do the same thing and then once you get on land here like the part that's not gonna be in water you can try to space them out a bit more like that pretty happy with that and then we're gonna exit the group we're gonna hit x on our keyboard and then we're gonna move all of them just into the ground so that they're slightly poking up like that and then you can just sort of drag your mouse onto different parts of the group and make some of them be a bit higher up some of them a bit lower down just make sure you get some variety going like that and then we're gonna do the same thing with these smaller rocks Then once again, just lower them into the ground and have them poking through a tiny bit. Then we're gonna enter the group again and just drag a few of them upwards. So I turned on the subaquatic filter here for the foliage type. Then we get some underwater plants as well. We're just gonna spread these out. And here as well, you could make a group for some different kinds. If I place that one there, some of the eelgrass just next to it, like that. And then we can put these in a group as well. If I just press I, drag and select, merge scenery into group, move this and <laughs> shove it down. And then we can duplicate this. All over the place just make sure that when you do this that nothing is poking out and that you adjust it as needed because you can't really turn it on to adjust to terrain here so it's gonna stay in the same position the entire time remember to press uh, set every once in a while so that you uh, place it down from uh, a few different angles like that and then I think we should also add some large rocks uh, just because that always makes everything look a lot more put together and and just nice really so we're gonna find a rock type that matches this area then we have this mossy one and we also have this one which i think ma yeah it matches the mountains in the background perfectly we're gonna use that and just place a few different ones together and there is really no right way to do this so just play around with uh, some different sizes and we might have to do some adjustments once we put the water in because some of these will poke out and we gotta make sure that it looks as it should and just really take your time with adding a bunch of rocks and plants and stuff like that because this is really what's gonna make everything come to life and make it look realistic and put together it can be a bit time consuming but with grouping and stuff like that it's usually a lot quicker so just don't rush the process that's really my suggestion uh, here yeah so let's put the water in and see see how it looks yeah, we actually added way too many rocks outside of the uh, lake area here. So let's just remove those who are unnecessary. And then we also want a few to be on land, but they should not be getting as much attention as they are right now. So then we're gonna do the same for these little ones. Just have them poking out a little bit. 
And you can already see it's looking a lot better. We could actually probably make these rocks poke a bit more out of the mountain here. I like adding these uh, sort of broken trees and then just kind of tilt it so that it's uh, resting on the rock here. Like that. That looks pretty okay. And then we can also have another one just sort of like falling into the water here. I thought we should uh, take a look at how to do some simple rock work with the mountains here as well. So what I tend to do is just start by placing down some large rocks. Like nothing too dramatic. Just keeping in mind to make smooth transitions and like no harsh edges. Just placing a bunch of these in one area and then once we've done that we can just try and duplicate them to different parts of the mountain like that and then we can just see if we can copy some of these and then just place them down wherever it kind of makes sense. We just want them to sort of poke through and then you just make adjustments that make them fit properly to where you're replacing. Like you don't have to do this if you think it's too time consuming but I really think it helps to just bring some extra texture and life to the mountains and it gives that extra touch of it being a real mountain. So I like to take the time to do this. When you do this just make sure you try to cover any harsh edges stuff like that okay so i think that's starting to be enough with the rocks for right now so let's look at adding some trees which also just helps a lot uh, trees and foliage i think these uh, coastal mangrove trees work really well for mountains just because you have the the roots sort of uh, hanging out so doing a couple of these would be nice because with these you kind of get the roots that can be like sort of hanging over the rocks so just carefully gonna place a couple of these down because those are <laughs> one of the only trees that it doesn't really matter if you place them by rocks because the roots are like spreading out and as long as there is uh, grass and soil nearby then it's uh, kind of okay for them to be on the rocks so where we have the green spots uh, that's kind of where it's okay to place down trees so we're gonna start with that and i always like adding at least two different kind of tree types just so we get some uh, difference in the colors and stuff we're just placing a bunch of different trees like all over the place where we have these green spots and then i use a third tree here to make these sort of bush areas the reason i use a third tree is to get an other set of color difference and this you don't really have to be as careful with where you place them because you can't really see underneath if there is grass growing there or not we're also going to look at some bushes here this looks nice to get mountains like this to look realistic and just like appealing you really have to add a lot of foliage but you have to make sure it's in the right spots if that makes sense so like especially where you have these sort of uh, clusters of rock try to add some of these small bushes in between where they meet and the cracks and stuff like that obviously not here because this is a solid rock wall wouldn't really make sense to have uh, those there and we can also add a couple of these down here so wherever you have these sort of naked areas just look for bushes and trees stones that uh, can fill in the blank areas so then you search up water for instance and then you get these uh, different kind of plants that tend to float on the water so just make sure you have the align to water setting turned on and you can have on the standard random rotation but just not the all version so like that and then we just pop a bunch of these all over the place Make sure you make a small cluster of them in some places and just like sort of build them out. A lot of the time you'll see that they kind of align themselves around rocks and stuff like that. I like to add uh, quite a few of them actually. Don't overdo it but they look pretty and they add uh, very nice details so I don't really mind having a lot of them. And then by the edge of the water here as well, I like to just sort of line them up over here. I also like to use these reeds here, just by the water edge. Let's remove the align to water here and then just sort of build these outwards and inwards as well. Use a few variations. 
like that make sure to leave some gaps as well because you don't really want plants all over the place just like paste them out a bit let's maybe actually remove these ones it is possible to add too many plants <laughs> you know so just uh, make adjustments when you see uh, how everything is coming together and like if there's too many plants then just remove some of them and that's basically the whole process so what you can also do is you can also click the water here and then go to customize and then you can actually change the color here and also change the transparency let's say we wanted to have a bit of a darker lake here like that for instance and we can also add some bubbles and mist if you like that and then there you have it it all depends on what you're going for if you want uh, this many plants or not so this is essentially the techniques i use to decorate my mountains and lakes in planet zoo but i'm also really hoping to see some of your creations as well so if you want to show off your own planet zoo work make sure to join our discord server with the link in the description below and leave some pictures in the planet zoo channel with that being said, I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!